As the first quarter of 2023 comes to a close, we're hitting a few milestones here for what we call internally the Evergreen Content Team. That's the folks that are dedicated to the creation of weekly, recurring, some might say evergreen video content. For Inside Star Citizen, today's show represents the completion of our fourth year and 150th episode since that first evolution from around. Uh -huh. Wow. Okay, let's do this math now. Now, Jared, I know it's it's overwhelming to do this math, but let's try and do this math. Jared, look at the face on this man trying to do this math. Uh, let's let's not let's just bypass this. On the verse in 2019, and when you factor in the legacy of ATV and Wingman's Hangar before that, <laughs> we're now just passing the 450th episode of this continuing behind the scenes series, unlike anything you'll find from any game developer anywhere else. By the way, we've done it all. We've done it all. I think we started this review show when it was around the verse. And yet, somehow, still, we never show anything good. It also marks the personal completion for me <laughs> of eight years shepherding over 1,200 videos showcasing the creation of this project. Even, even that one holiday live stream we don't like to talk about anymore. <laughs> I'm smelling thumbnail. I'm smelling that this will be the thumbnail. So to sign us off for this quarter, before we go about our regularly scheduled hiatus, we're bringing I think that's back good, an Coop. old favorite. I agree, that dude. grab bag of tiny looks at various aspects from they all over to. development, the Sprint Report. Hooray. Now, for those of you who maybe have never seen one of these before, a sprint is what we call the internal two-week cadence where developers go off on a task come back to check in, see everyone's progress, get some notes, and then either move on to something else or go back for another two week sprint on the same feature. So what that means is what you're going to see here this week is actually internal developer art, the kind they don't usually make to be seen publicly. It's not the flashy the best and of somewhat humor mentally wind. unstable work of the ISC gameplay capture team who have been on quite a streak recently, possibly because we changed their medications. So without further ado, let's jump into the Inside Star Citizen Quarter 1 2023 Sprint Report and Clam Bake Showdown. <laughs> I'm assuming that editorial will put a nice, subtle title on screen right here. Also, there's no Clam Bake Showdown. God damn it. I don't it. know why I said that. Liar. Let's like start everything things else, off with Jared. some spacecraft and vehicles, where there was recently a small onboarding task for a new hire to update the remote turrets for the 600i from origin which you can see here i think we can all agree it's, it's a, a category on pornhub limitless the game today and if you watched last week's isc on the upcoming changes to tractor beams and alpha 319 and beyond you might have noticed the argo srv flying around in that beyond section here's a closer look at its progress as it currently makes its way Drake through is final art it. towards a scheduled release later this year now, for those who follow the progress tracker on the public roadmap, here are your first looks at three vehicles currently making their journeys throughout <laughs> the pipeline, starting with the RSI Lynx Rover, companion sojourner to the famous right. Urza we all know and love, and often found packaged with the luxurious Constellation Phoenix. It's currently in gray box phase, and it's uh -huh. nice to see the RSI styling continue to evolve, S especially with those tires. I mean... They're, they're way too fashionable. A, tires. They're way too fashionable. Uh, you know, as a Drake man, I have to say those tires are just way too fashionable. <laughs> they're cool, dude, but those those are cool tires, right? Too fashionable. And that as we Tina move inside, like we Tina can would take like a look those. at the cockpit coming along. And then She's there's the rear, she which is at the back, like the tire and chair. which is already far more fancy than its Ursa brethren. Look at the inside of this. What is going on here? Where's the LED mood lighting? Oh, where, like, dudes, what is going on in here, man? This okay. is great. I thought the tires were cool. <laughs> like, there is the LED mood lighting. Holy cool? shit. Because that looks like a comfy ass chair. Can I, can I take it? <laughs> What's up, no, considerably? No, no, Welcome enough. to the stream, dude. Yeah, yeah, we're fine. Good Look job. at this. Look at this. This is, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. There's also the Crusader Spirit, which just entered gray box phase recently. You can see here early work on the, the exterior, stitching, making fuss. certain every part of it matches the metrics laid out in the white box phase before it. 
Ooh. then popping in through the rear of the ship, which, like the Lynx, is also in the back, and then into the cockpit that's looking, well, a bit contrasty Sh at the shiny. moment. Shiny. <laughs> but that's not uncommon for Greybox mm. phase, as this right. period is mostly about defining shape language and material you breakup that soul before glow everything with this gets refined you got that soul later glow. in Final Art phase. Soul glow. Whoa. And then let's take a look. Dude, you got that soul glow with that. What's up, Windlord? Windlord's supporting the show today, dude. You're feeding my family all day long song, man. Thank you, Windlord. Like a boss, dude. Like a boss. Gifting out. Gifting out to the new man in here considerably. It's nice to see new faces in here. What's up, guys? How you guys doing? Look at the gray box bomb bay for the bomber variant that's being worked on in tandem with all the others. Ooh. Finally, let's look at recent gray box progress on the Apoa Santok Yai, Very the MSR. alien Xion Very fighter MSR, where you can MSR. see the exterior coming along pretty well. The thrusters are being modeled out. I love alien tech. I love alien ships. I love alien design. And they've started exploring how the landing gear will work. Got experimenting with the shape Xion. language a bit to make certain they're beefy enough to believably hold the Xion mass of this entire ship on. when all is said and done. Whew. And as for when you're going to see the 600i turret, the Lynx, Needs more the SRD, right, man. the Spirit, the Santok Yai, and more make their way into the persisting universe, I'd recommend, as always, keeping an eye on the public roadmap for details when they become available. Now let's move from ships that fly to winged creatures, as astute readers of the monthly report might already be aware, one of the many things the AI team is currently working on is pushing Boyd's development in the persistent universe. Now, Boyd's are the algorithmic behavior of small creatures that can populate the oh, planets yeah, yeah, and moons yeah, yeah, yeah. of the I persistent universe. The pike, With a test here right, of right, condors right. slowly learning to, uh, to avoid right. flying into mountains or... Hold on, hold on. Can I get an amen? Somebody stand up here. Somebody testify. I need that fauna. I need that wildlife. I need that alien life. Thank you. Thank you. Drowning in the oceans beneath them. Dun 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 condor man. Nobody, huh? Just me. I, I remember that. And the funny thing is I'm that old to remember that. And the awkward silence when they switch that, you know, when <laughs> like you just stand in there at the bar, like waiting for somebody to know, man. And then some work on I ocean got points fish. on that. Here, completely, totally, oh. and utterly unanimated. It's just a <laughs> it's just a test of behaviors here, people. Without all the motion parameters. Yeah, yeah, I was really worried. I was really worried until he said that, honestly. Parameters that'll make them look good one day. <laughs> I was really worried for a now, second. Now, I'm including this as a test. If I see all you out there on the internet, it's like, these star citizen fish look great. I'm going to know you don't listen to a word I'm saying. <laughs> My feelings will be hurt. Meanwhile, the Interactables team, formerly known as the Props team, have been running through and physicalizing a bunch of assets for the Persistent Universe, like these weights for gems like the ones you might find in New Babbage. Similar to the fish we just watched, this is also before animation has had their chance to contribute. Right, so right. let's not judge the throwing form being displayed right. here. Dude. Still, it's nice to see even the littlest and let me tell you something these types of things people do not ever take into account when they're when they're watching the development it's like hey it's in development right i can tell you there's a lot of content creators out there that instantly start to throw the poo for those clickety clacks you know who they are they start making problems where problems don't need to be had and they're out there blaring off. They're just, they're, they're mouthing off all these things. They are not even uh, aware of game development. And you know, these, these are things we, you, you have to, this is why I'm glad you're here on DG360. This is why I'm glad you're here with us. We're rational things adults. Things behave naturally with realistic mass I'm not and here for clickety clicks whenever possible. This effort to make things behave as you'd expect them to also extends to the coffee machines of the verse with a pass recently done to go through and repair their broken functionality. Now, I did consider turning this section into an update on either bartender or mess hall features, just for old time's sake. But someone who will go unnamed stopped me. Just know that there are heroes out there looking out for each and every one of you. Also, it looks like the team developed a few new coffee mugs along the way. There's the big Benny's. Well, just let this video play for a bit. There's the See big Benny's mug. a couple mug. coffee cups in action mm -hmm. and think about 
how much bartender stuff I'm not talking about right now. <laughs> also, speaking of bartenders, if you want some interactables of your own, there's this new set of Star Citizen pint glasses up for pre-order. Oh on the, no, on, shameless on merch. Shameless merch. I, I asked- Shameless merch, hold on a second. Boo! Boo! Seamus merch plugging. He's shilling. He's doing it on purpose, though. It's, it's intended humor. It's intended humor. Asked if they wanted me to promote them. And they said, no, because you'll probably do something silly and stupid with it. And I said, Dude. leave it with me. And they said, what? No, we said no. And I said, no problem. And here we are. <laughs> Back to the Interactables team. They've also What's been pro- up? That's my buddy Execute coming in here like a boss. With that Viking charge up in here, bringing his runners in. They're running in. They're running in like crazed Vikings. Somebody please offer them gold. Somebody please. Thank you very much, Moth. Welcome to the fam. Grab your chicken suit. It's a little strange. It's a little strange. Just grab the chicken suit. What's up, actual? Runners coming in, flocking to the channel. Thanks to Execute. Like a boss, they're coming in in droves. Hopefully not like the fish that we just saw from the Inside Star Citizen uh, show here. Thank you very much for coming in here. Execute, you are a boss. I absolutely love you. Don't listen to, to everybody out there. Uh, you are a gentleman and a scholar. I hear a lot of people say that, that you aren't. Don't listen to them. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Bring. Welcome, Bring a Bar. Br Bringe Bearer. I don't know how I pronounce that, but uh, thank you. Thank you for following me. Typing a new way to hang a variety of posters on the walls of the player habs and spacecraft with these new expanding electronic devices that could let you decorate any space that's uh -oh, marked up for them. expanding electronic devices. The prototyping here is don't using like common watches. adverts for in-universe oh, events. Oh, that was true. That was really true. I'm, I'm sorry, apparent honey. Very quickly I'm sorry. That in was, allowing players to not only really decorate the their spaces, but to collect and memorialize important moments from their time Fingers. in the persisting universe, to take missions to set up flyers for in-game shops or events, post bulletins for bounty missions, and much, much more. I gotta, I gotta answer this, because uh, this is great. That one guy, you can tell, he's new to the stream. I don't know if he's new to Star Citizen, but I love this question, because these are types of questions that make me remember when I first started Star Citizen. And that one guy, 7953, says, do you think in the next years they will bring galaxies that you can visit or other universe, or other universes, or is that too astronomical? I like, I like, I like that. I like that. Listen, we gotta focus. We gotta focus on this one universe uh, with the systems in it. We currently only have one system. Now, a lot of people listen. There's a lot to do in that one system. The name of the system, Stanton. Okay, we're gonna be onboarding another system soon. It's called Pyro. Okay, so we're going to start with this universe, right? And when when the universe gets full and all the systems are finally in, uh, and, and you know, I will be very old. Uh, <laughs> then we can talk about adding additional universes, additional galaxies. But 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 I like that. I like your imagination, that one guy. I, I like the the exuberance. Uh, you know, it's great. I love you, dude. And this last bit is from both the Interactables and Mission Feature team who have been developing the next dangerous new contraband to sweep its way through the persistent universe, grasping weevil eggs. Grasping weevil eggs. Is this, is, is this what, what's the file name? Oh, no, well, that's what it is. Huh. Let's switch on over to the environment, planetary, and lighting team's work with these images of updated atmosphere progress for the planet Hurston, which adds a stronger layer of pollution much closer to the planet's surface. That helps Looks like suck Los light out of the atmosphere, add a richer gradient, and really just makes the place seem dirtier overall, mm -hmm. which we can expect to play very well with the upcoming Loreville 2.0 like and Alpha 319, like dirty. some of which you can see here. I'm just going to... Let these images speak for themselves. Okay? Right. Let them speak. Mm -hmm. Look at that sun. Mm. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Dude, this is fantastic. 
and we'll take a deeper look at how light, atmosphere, and the new cityscape all come together in Alpha 319 you? when ISC returns from hiatus in just a few weeks. <laughs> All that beautiful and while smoke. the atmosphere of Hurston is getting a little love, so too are the verdant forests of Microtech. There we go. As part of a greater overall overhaul we'll be discussing more of in the coming months, the forests of Microtech are receiving a performative refresh that will make the environment seem richer and denser visually while providing more gameplay opportunities for cover during missions, racing, and other activities galore. Gib trees. The landing zone teams have also completed a sprint, adding additional mission locations scattered around the planet Crusader in the style of resort hotels that can utilize overlays for pleasant, in-use active businesses, as well as those taken over by the ever-present and vile nine tails. Each new cluster is designed to be a procedural home for a variety Smart. of mission types and looks to draw players out from Orison and into the far corners of the gas giant. Execute, I love you, bro. And down Go on get the surface of Hurston, man. work is underway on what early white box good? phase of local law enforcement offices. I'm starting to get A hungry. place for players to utilize the next evolution of bounty hunting gameplay we'll discuss more about later this year. To collect, or in this case, drop off the captured bodies of criminal outlaws collected by players. Now, the drop off here is right up front. Because in early tests, it was getting kind of weird just walking through the hall. Dude, you're bringing them in like that, like a vending machine, man. You're bringing in them in a... In a oh. <laughs> Bounty hunter vending machines? Are you kidding me? Yes, sir. What? That... Listen, listen. That is ingenious, man. Give me those creds. Give me those creds, dude. Always pushing bodies deeper and deeper That's into the awesome. facility. Unless you're into that sort of thing. Right, right, Wendy. Moist Google. <laughs> right, dude. You can then also check out the bounty boards to collect new missions here. What do you say about Moist Google? Or Noodle? go forward into the shop and resupply as needed. And there's an office for meetings, but who needs more of those in life? And then we bring ourselves to the detention area, where a number of cells can vary from location to location. I suspect that many of you will be looking forward to spending your time anywhere else besides Kleischer, even if it's just a jail and not a prison. Also in white boxes, the pre-production blockouts for a variety of building interior modules that will fit inside the towering skyscrapers of New Babbage on Microtech, being developed and tested in situ simultaneously to work out and discover anything developers might not have considered or recognized as necessary in the original mandate. Sorry, Max, can't do that. They all wanted it this way. The idea here is that once the Majority player lands, vote, they would vote. enter this particular interior from the very top, encountering a lobby and expected elevators. Then, after a brief trip down, Watch out for elevators. a number of different interior modules, such as block of player apartments seen in the example here. And speaking of modular interiors, the Montreal Tools team continues their work refining the very process used to make locations for the Persistent Universe, including several sprints on something called the PU Locations Tool, a plugin that artists and designers can use to build and iterate modular locations quickly for the various star systems of the Persistent Universe. What you're seeing here is the PU Locations Tool fully integrated into the game editor, where this person has decided they wish to create a space clinic in Pyro. No doubt a location players will visit quite often in the lawless frontier that awaits. Yeah, Next, I can't wait. let's cook the first module, which is the lobby and includes the relevant astronomy, connectors dude. necessary so that the player can traverse from one room to the other without falling through <laughs> into the cold depths of space. <laughs> Sounds like a it's good idea, Wayne. It's players feel safe in their space stations, oh. at least from the environment art. Legal note, this does not extend to elevators, which are a unique curse upon players and developers oh, elevators. alike. That's for sure, dude. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. <laughs> Next is what's called the Universal Room, which is a super fancy programmer term for hallway. They know it's true. We can even change the seed if we don't like that particular hallway and generate another and another 
each one creating the various connectors needed for us to continue building. And then some side rooms, or in rare cases, a rear room, which is usually at the back. Some shops like the pharmacy. <laughs> Oops. Awesome, Max. I'll <laughs> check it out after the show. <laughs> I'm going to leave that in there for solidarity with developer pain. <laughs> this face. This face. Now let's go inside and start cooking some overlays, which is basically everything involved in the set decor that will further distinguish one space clinic from the next. Things are pretty generic at the moment, so we turn on our vis areas, check our tags, Start the cook and whoa, nice. We move forward. Looks like we forgot to cook a container. Easy enough. We're not going to put rooms here, so let's uh, go ahead and start closing these connectors off. And then I we can cook us up episode. another overlay for this side room here. Nice. And this process is repeated in all subsequent rooms and overall is another terrific example of how game development is exponential and absolutely non-linear. Totally progress. agree with you, Futz. Totally agree with you, bro. Now, as asset libraries are built and grown and tools are conceived and iterated on, the progress you can make at one point should be exceeded by the next. And overall becomes a continuing reminder that the struggle of what comes before is necessary and right to birth the improved technologies. Dude, they were working on the tech and forever too, man. of everything that comes next. Right, Firestarter? A new version that does everything <laughs> right, just dude. saw in one click that recently became available to developers. Yeah, I mean, like, that's what people don't understand. Firestarter brings up a really good point, something I've, I've known for a very long time. What, they, what they've what they created uh, to generate all those uh, particular spaces randomly like that and and that they fit together was a tool that had been in the works for like years and firestarter said dude dude makes a whole ass clinic in like 12 clicks uh under 15 minutes that tells you what they've been making for the past 10 years when they said the tools this should tell people what to expect for the speed of content coming soon i think you're going to see a lot of it i really think there's already tons of content as well on other systems we had a video of Terra uh, that we did in 2016 uh, that showed us Terra. And so, like, I really think there's plenty of other systems because of the work being done on Squadron 42. Wow, Gator. God bless you, dude. Bless you, Gator. Bless you, Gator. Old school. Gator's old school, man. I love him. He's OG. But these, this tool is going to make things much faster, and they've already implemented it in other systems. Um, and, and you know, there's plenty, plenty behind the scenes that we don't know about. And we, we're only seeing what they're showing us. There's... Uh, there's a lot of naysayers out there. There's a lot of, uh, uh, of content creators that, that are making content for the hate bait so that you click complaining about everything that will say they don't have anything else under the covers. They do. They do. It's foolish to think that they don't. It's foolish to think that they don't have other things already planned and ready to go. I mean, just because we're not seeing it, they think it's not there absolutely ridiculous opinions from a lot of the YouTube content creators out there that probably are, are way too new and haven't been involved with this as long as I have. There's so many people in this room below me that know this. <laughs> so it's good to inform people that there's plenty developed that we're not seeing. <laughs> you think that would be something that most of us would understand, but Hey, we're going to say it with peace and love that there's plenty of things developed at this point that we have not seen that are ready to go. Really what we're at right now, server meshing. We've hit the wall. We've hit the wall right now, server meshing. It, it's where the rubber meets the road. It's where the re real work gets done. This is where we're at. And that's good. That's a good thing. That's a good thing that we're here. It took us this long to get here. I'm glad we're here. You're going to have content creators tell you it's horrible that it took this long to get here. <laughs> They don't understand the scope. They don't understand the journey. They don't understand exactly what it takes to get to this point. They never did. They never will. They're making content simply so you can click on it and they get paid. That's why they're making the content. They're not, they're not, they don't, they don't have a passion for this game. They could care less about this game. 
They could care less about the people making the game. They're literally only making content so that you click on it and they get paid. And there's so many out there that don't realize that there's plenty under the covers. I tell Christy that all the time. Uh, and then she tests me on it, and I'm like, I'm sorry, I lied to you. <laughs> and while we're talking new technologies, let's wrap things up this week with some work from the PU character art team, which had a small sprint working to convert some of our older <laughs> legacy assets to newer resources that have been developed over recent years, including Layer Blend V2 and the ability to spawn items with specific levels of wear and decay. So this means that not every version you find out in the verse is going to look exactly the same. The team is also using the opportunity to discover more chances to further modularize existing armors like the Nomad and Light Outlaw you're seeing here, as well as many more we'll be showcasing later this year. It's part of a continuing effort to add more customization to what you wear in both the new stuff that's coming down the pipeline and what's already there in the Persistent Universe. And that customization also extends to a variety of tints that can be used for spawning armor variants going, within Dean. the universe, which you can see in some early explorations here. This will allow mission and location designers yeah, to I remember specify that. specific I that, variations XQ. of components and tints for different areas, or use procedural tools. Listen, Sandy was on his ass about this. Sandy was like, I want to make some garments and fabric. She was all about the fashionista like Tina is with Star Citizen. We know Tina is. We watch, we watch her channel from time to time. We know she's a fashionista. We know she got tricked by Pico. Uh, all the Picos out there, very, very deadly, angry alien penguins. Uh, they're very vicious. Uh, do not fall for their tricks and shenanigans like Tina did. Tina likes it. Tina likes the fashionista side of, of Star Citizen. Sandy said, I want fabrics that flow in the wind. And Chris said, God damn it, I will make that happen. And Execute brings up a good point here from InfoRunners. It says, Mr. Roberts himself worked on that cloth deck, but do not forget that the impetus of that was Sandy. Sandy said, I want flowing garments. And Chris said, oh, son of a bitch, here we go. Tools <laughs> <laughs> to randomly generate and dozens then we got and dozens flowing of garments for each Thank outfit. Thank you, Sandy. And when that gets extended to many Thank of you, the Sandy. outfits already within the universe, this will get us a far greater variety we all of do, things Moth. within the Precision Universe than we have today. We are the Pico Resistance. And oh heck, I know I said we were going to wait until our last big segment on Loraville in just a couple weeks once we return from hiatus, but let's go ahead and leave you with just a few shots of the absolutely fantastic okay. work the lighting team is Admittedly, he got the cloth tech down, but he didn't necessarily get the physics grid down. You, you know what I'm saying, Winlord? <laughs> bringing this new Loraville 2.0 to life. It's a love fest. Yeah, man. I'm gonna, it's a love fest. I'm going to shut up and let several thousand Ooh. words of images do the talking instead. Ooh. Mm. It's just going to keep getting better and better and more detailed. It's going to get crazy, man. It's just going to keep getting better and better and better and better, dude. It's it's insane. <clears throat> It's, it's looking, wow. So what we learned this week? Well, we learned that there are, as always, a lot of ships and it's vehicles so in the lit. pipeline, all scheduled to make their way to the Persistent Universe throughout the remainder of this year. That work to bring fauna to the Persistent Universe is back on the menu. Good. That grasping weevil eggs are a thing, as is the continuing work to physicalize as many aspects of Star Citizen as possible. That locations, new and old, continue to be iterated on and improved yeah, upon. Yeah, these are great episodes. Our team I still like last stuff. week's real. And I think last week's was a home run. Willikers, this was a I'm good one. I'm pretty certain we're just going to park the only constant outside Loraville at night for all of Star Citizen Live next quarter. Now, as we're at the end of this quarter, ISC is going on its regularly scheduled hiatus. Oh. But the work doesn't stop there. I hate when they next take a break. Next quarter, we'll be back with our final looks at Loraville 2.0 <laughs> before it goes live. And okay, okay, we need a substitute crew. When when there's a break, we need, like, the substitute crew. Who would be on the substitute crew? Like, the Inside Star Citizen break squad. <laughs> like, that's what we want. But 319, I, I hate it. Where's my boost out of it? I hate breaks. Coming to Arena Commander after that, <laughs> as well as the new Daryl <laughs> I hate breaks, towns, Jared. New player experience <laughs> tutorial, a sequel to the buggy racetrack in Orison, but for Microtech, John Crew would be great. Of the new ships and John Crew would be pissed off the show then in two minutes. A discussion with <laughs> superstar Zyla would be cool. Zyla would be a good choice. More ships for Star Citizen than anyone else alive. 
Uh, we're going to look ahead to a whole bunch of new features coming in Alpha 320, and then, of course, continuing oh, our journey man, to 4.0 here and there along the man. way. It's been one hell of an eight years, and the last four of them bringing 150 episodes of this show to you has been a blast. And we're still getting better at doing so each and every week. Yes. Now, I can Unlike myself in DG360, which continually gets worse and worse, but we... Hey, you guys keep flocking to me and you know i i just figured that the formula the magic formula is the worse i get uh, the more popular this channel gets in this community i, I will continually focus I, I make a blood oath to you i make a promise to you that i will continually do my worst <laughs> thank you yes sir. i say that because i'm not talking about yeah. myself i'm referring to the talents and work of Will, Dave, Alex, Casey, Jill, Stephanie, Amanda, Caroline, Tom, <laughs> David, Luke, we Justin, certainly are Jake, executed. Vicky, and now Mercy. Welcome to the team who have all made this last year the best one yet. Thanks for putting up with me, and here's to another 150 more. Oh, and if you've noticed and liked the 10 different memes that have been here on the screen all quarter, we'll be releasing them to the social media later this week. <laughs> I can tell you they make great phone wallpapers. For Inside Star Citizen, <laughs> I'm Jerry Huckabee. Thanks for watching. Thanks for 150 episodes. And we'll see you back here in about That was a good one. I like this episode. This was good. The last two have been pretty good, man. I, I'll say the last one was a home run. This one, this one was right up there. Triple. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Oh. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, ah. Uh, <laughs> oh. Oh, man. Oh, God. Brave citizens. Brave, brave citizens. Watch out. Watch out. <laughs> no, 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 no. Watch out. Don't trust it. Move. Get out of there. This is scarier than aliens. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> Run. Run! Run! No! No! Uh-oh. Wow, this is intense. Oh, my God. He's not getting away, is he? We'll never know. We'll never know. What a great episode. All right, if you're watching here on YouTube, thanks so much. If you're in here live and you came over from Execute's channel, Info Runners, which is awesome, shout out to my buddy, Execute at Info Runners. Thank you so much for joining me and following me. I appreciate you guys. Like I said, I've been covering Star Citizen since 2014. It has been a crazy journey. I love it. I think the commitment of these developers is out on display for everybody, and uh, you just have to be blind not to see it. It is these people love the game i love the fact that they're building us a game that is one i've ever uh, that one i've wanted since my childhood uh, you got to give them respect uh for for putting it on the line and continuing to do this even though there's tons of noise out there so like you know like these are real people and they're they're doing the work and a lot of the work we don't get to see you know, that's why I love the show, because we do actually get a little peek behind the curtain. We get to see what's going on. So if you are watching this on YouTube as a highlight, please push the like button, share this video, get our show out there, help us grow. We're doing great, guys. We're killing it on YouTube. We're killing it on Twitch. We're doing great. We're do I think this is the best we've ever done as a community, uh, and and you guys are, are to thank for it. So thank you very much. We're going to go to the after party. If you're watching on YouTube, peace out, YouTube. Uh, let's head on over and let's have uh, some serious party time here.